at Class A. Double A getting set to go tonight with the two-time defending champs, Noah Tana. Let's swing over to Doug McLeod at the St. Paul Civic Center. We'll have, among other things, a couple of teams, each of which has only one loss. We have some teams that got in here with some records that were just a little bit about 500 and some teams that may surprise some people. So we should have some more great double A action here tonight. Let's take a look at our bracket board as the quarterfinals continue. As you get to the quarterfinals tonight, Owatonna, the defending state champ, meets Creighton Darrell Hall, 24 and 1. The second game, the other team with only one loss, that's Adina, also 24 and 1, against Mankato West. Back in the tournament, but a different crew with a record of 15 and and nine. My partner tonight from the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars, Ian Carlson. You've seen a couple of these teams quite a bit. Creighton, Durham Hall, and Adina both. Talk about Creighton. Well, Creighton is a strong team. Their uh, five starters are averaging close to double figures, and uh, they play as a team really, really well, I think. So they'll take on the defending champion, Owatonna Indians, in our first game. Edina is certainly an old late conference foe. You know all about them. They've lost only one game. Oh, yeah. Edina is a strong, strong team. They're looking really well, I think. Uh, their five starters are all capable of playing big time ball. I think that Edina is looking really well this tournament. It's wall to wall basketball, and we'll be back with more as the quarterfinals swing into the evening session. Stay with us. Evening quarterfinals are set to go. It's the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders at 24 and 1 against the Indians of Owatonna, the defending state champions at 18 and 6. Let's meet the teams now in public address announcer Dick Stanford. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for our first game of the evening session of the 1991 Class AA Boys Basketball Tournament. Our first game this evening matches the champions of Region 1AA, the Owatonna Indians, with a record of 18 and 6. And the champions of Region 3AA, with a record of 24 and 1, Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. First, let's meet the cheerleaders from the respective schools. First, the Owatonna High School cheerleaders, Amy Bauer, Maria Davidson, Jennifer Grubish, Dina Maher, Katie Muir, Renee Olson, and mascot Jill Novak. And now here are the Creighton Durham cheerleaders, Gina McLaughlin, Claire McInerney, Katie McMahon, Janelle Shaw, Joanna Teeley, Jenny Stacy, and Captain Rachel Powers. And now here are your reserves. First for Oatana. Five foot ten inch junior guard number ten, Wade Jessup. Five foot eleven inch junior guard number twelve, Chris Erkey. Six foot three inch sophomore forward number fourteen, Tim Klaus. Six foot two inch senior guard number twenty two, Mark Felber. Six foot senior guard number thirty two, Jeff Hansen. Six foot four inch junior center number 34, Nate Shores. Six foot two inch junior forward number 40, Carl Erickson. Six foot one inch junior forward number 42, John Stoltz. Six foot four inch junior center number 50, Chris Kent. And six foot two inch senior forward number 54, Matt Gwynn. And now let's meet the Creighton Durham Hall Reserves. First, five foot eight inch junior guard, number 13, Eric Caulfield. Five foot 11 inch senior guard, number 21, Diallo Gant. Five foot seven inch sophomore guard, number 23, Myron Taylor. Six foot two inch junior forward, number 35, Chris Walsh. Six foot five inch junior center, number 41, Nick Tambo. 
six foot two inch junior forward, number 43, Dave Schledy. Six foot one inch junior guard, number 44, Tom Salmon. Six foot five inch sophomore forward, number 54, Arvesta Kelly. And six foot three inch senior center, number 55, Bob Cherry. Here are your starting lineups. At forward for Oatana, six foot one inch junior number 24, Joey All. At forward for Creighton Durham, six foot two inch senior number 33, Israel Moses. At forward for the Indians, six foot three inch junior number 52, Tom Wenzel. At forward for the, Indian, for the Raiders, six foot five inch senior, number 45, Johnny Tower. At center for Oatana, six foot five inch senior, number 44, Reed Stronsky. At center for Creighton Durham Hall, six foot 10 inch junior, number 53, Josh Krieger. At guard for the Indians, six foot two inch senior, number 20, Mark Randall. At guard for the Raiders, six foot two inch junior, number 15, Steve Ruska. At guard for Oatana, six foot two inch senior, number 30, Scott Bangs. At guard for Creighton Durham, six foot two inch senior, number 31, Matt McDonough. The head coach of the Indians is Len Olson. The head coach of the Raiders is Len Horizon. And your officials for this game are Al Kloppen and Rich Stolt. And there we are in the Class AA quarterfinal bracket continues as the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders meet the Oatana Indians. First, the national anthem from the St. Paul Civic Center, our AA venue in 1991. over the last four seasons. Bunch of new names in there, not necessarily completely new because a lot of them saw some tournament action, but Zion was saying at the start, Mark Randall is really the only big time veteran with a lot of state tournament experience, but just winning it means a lot. Last year, when uh, Creighton Durham Hall came in here, they lost to North in the quarterfinals, then they lost to Bloomington Jefferson in the consolation. A score of 63 to 54. They too have had a lot of sophomores and freshmen now come back with one more year of playing experience on it. Yes, they have. Uh, they they were a young team last year and they were excellent last year. That's why I think this year that they're really going to show their power, having most of them seniors now. Well, oh, kind of veteran coach Len Olson, who got the Indians to an 18 and 6 record this year and the one double A champions. And we are ready to go. The Oatana Indians, the defending champs in the silver, gray, and blue, and the purple and gold clad Raiders of Creighton Durham Hall, who prior to last year had been here one other time. That's before the all male Creighton High School combined with the all female Durham Hall. They were here just as the Creighton Raiders in 1976. Creighton's first shot by Steve Laska goes off. And out of bounds. 
Rockets. Scott Bangs, the senior guard who is averaging 18 points a game this year for the Oatana Indians as we come back in. Steve Rosga there. The trouble inside Israel Moses. Now on the right wing, Matt McDonough. In the middle, here's Krieger. And it's out of the air by Mark Randall, the senior guard, averaging nearly 21 points a game. It goes to Scott Bangs. Here's Randall now. He has scored as high as 40, his season average 20.7. Bangs for three, bangs it. And with 41 seconds into the first quarter, Owen Connor jumps off with a 3 nothing lead. Now back come the Creighton Raiders. Here's the leaper by McDonough, runs out. And a foul underneath. Well, you start off with that three-pointer, it can make your whole night, can it? Oh, it's great. You get the tempo going your way, and you're just feeling good about everything that you do. Your shot comes around better as the game goes on, I think. Inbounds pass coming from Krieger. The foul is on Tom Wenzel, the senior forward of the Oatana Indians. Here's Rosga for three. And go! And a big flying rebound by Tom Wenzel. Creighton comes out shooting threes real strong right away. I think that's what their game plan is to get the three-point shot off and maybe get themselves a good lead. Here's Mark Randall. Baseline left. Stransky is there over the block. And the rebound down to Josh Krieger. 6'10 junior center, and they play it away for McDonough. Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. People still over there. I think a lot of people in the basketball community still remember. Here's the jumper by Rosna. That one for a pair. Even though Creek got here as a separate team, Durham Hall, when it was on its own, had a very good basketball program, too. The Durham Hall Dollies had some outstanding teams before these two teams, the two schools merged. Randall shot off the iron. Matt McDonough brings the Creek and Durham Hall Raiders back down. Champions of Region 3 AA. Our now Moses. Into the lane, McDonough down the left. Guarded by Scott Banks. Baseline left, Wheeling. Bigger up there. 546 to go in the first quarter. There's a break in the action early in our Class AA evening quarterfinal opener. And the score is Creek Durham Hall 4, Oatana 3. We'll be right back. Well, I had both these teams could shoot outside, and that's how Oatana got on the board early. Yeah, they can definitely. Uh, this first three-pointer they had here by Oatana was just a great go get them for them. They got their tempo going right, I think. And now it's just going, it's going to be looking good for them the, as the time goes on. That was Scott Bangs who brings the ball down now, number 30 for the Indians. Trailing at the moment, four to three, after a couple of two-pointers by the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Bangs into the deep right baseline. Oh, they kick it up high. And Randall will work it now. Eyeballed by Steve Roska. Into the baseline. Randall and blocked away from him. Up for grabs. Grab right back by Randall. Bangs. Randall had the notion for three. Randall on the wing again, guarded by Roska. Leaps. Got That was for him and five minutes to go in the first quarter it's now five to four Oatana by one. Oatana does a nice job looking for the open man I think and uh, they're getting the good shots that they want. Well they didn't get the two straight championships and back in here again by not playing very good sound fundamental basketball. That's really what it is at this level in addition to skill isn't it? You don't play the razzle dazzle game when you come in here you got to have the fundamentals or you can't do the job. Yeah I think you definitely have to play as a team once you get to the state time you can't go one man take all you know it has to be a team effort. Krieger will put it in. Stransky drew the foul. Three pointer off the iron. Right back again to Josh Krieger. Nicely, softly in for our best of Kelly Jr. And there it was with 4.35 to go in the quarter, 6-5. to five. Now Creighton Durham Hall by a pair. Bangs. Hall, oh, they work quickly now. Randall kicks it up high, a pump. Bangs and Randall, double threat outside. Sending Stransky to try to get in. We'll see if they go post up here early in the game. They've not really so far. 
Stransky. Back out for Randall. Foul as he went up. Came down hard, but a play like that, you're almost definitely either going to get a good clear shot or somebody's going to take a whack at you and you're going to get a foul called against him. Yeah, he had good position on that shot as he went in, but uh, oh, uh, Cretan Darren Hall's height just came over the top and took care of that one. But he's beyond the line now, so he'll get a chance for two. At the free throw line, a two shot foul for Mark Randall. Ties the game at six. 406 to go, first quarter. Randall with four points in the early going. Four of the seven for Owatonna. 7 6 the Indians in the saddle now. 4 1 to go, first quarter. I think that Creighton Durham Hall should be trying to work the ball inside right about now, with having the height advantage. They're taking, the power. they're taking the outside shots, but if they work it in, I think they'll get the easier shots. Strosky pulled that one off, and Owatonna will come back down again. It has not fallen. Then from the outside, Wheeling Randall on the fall, no good. And our best of Kelly will bring it away. Here is McDonough. The Creighton Durham Hall Raiders with the ball trailing now by one early in the game still. Johnny Tower with McDonough. Three pointer, yes! <laughs> Matt McDonough gets the tray with 321 to go in the first quarter. Creighton Durham Hall up by a pair now. To seven. Here's Scott Bangs. Almost traveled all. Stronsky over a crowd was fouled on the way up. And again, powering inside. And it draws the foul, which will be on Johnny Tower of Creighton Darrow. All right. Well, he gets in there, gets a good shot. I don't think that it was a, a real serious foul, but he was fouled, so he will get the chance now to shoot two. Reed Stronsky to shoot two for the Big Nine Conference Owatonna Indians. 3.06 to go in the first quarter. 9-8 game now. Owatonna pulls to one. And Reed Stronsky the double four. Almost dropped in off the bounce. 9-8. Otana down by one. Creighton Darren with the ball. Arvesta Kelly underneath for Tower. Johnny Tower was open and a nice play. Eleven eight. The Raiders up by three. Randall hooked it over the crowd. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, Randall had a nice drive there. I thought he was good under control and just watched the glass the whole way. 11-10, Creighton Durham Hall with the ball and a one-point lead. Josh Krieger, the 6'10 senior center, up high and in for Kelly. McDonough guarded by Scott Bangs. Here's Rosga. Arvesta Kelly. Open McDonough. Wide open angle now, and Creighton Durham Hall widens the margin to three. 13-10, 2.05 left first quarter. Double A, or Class A action, rather, beginning at Williams Arena before too long, so stay with us. Complete coverage of the A and Double A brackets all day and night. Now here is Oatana's Joey All on the right side for Randall. Three-pointer. Slapped down by our best of Kelly. Matt McDonough for the Creighton Durham Raiders. Outside for Tower. Three-pointer for Johnny Tower, the senior forward of the Raiders. 16 to 10, and the three-pointers are falling. Creighton's showing that they can really shoot outside, I think, tonight. Uh, they could bring the ball inside, but they're choosing to take it outside and get the good outside shot. I guess, it's, doing. guess as long as it's falling, why not, huh? Yeah, no doubt. Puck from the baseline didn't go for Owatonna's Reed Stronsky. Creighton Darren brings it back. McDonough deep leaping Rosga off the iron, trying to get the rebound himself, and it was just tapped away as he and Mark Randall got there simultaneously. There's a break in the action with 103 to go in the first quarter. Creighton Darren Hall 16, Oatana 10, and we'll be right back with more. State tournament basketball action, and hello to everybody watching along on TV6, KAAL TV in Austin, and on KEYC TV, Channel 12 in Mankato. 
It is Creighton Durham Hall 16 Owatonna 10 with 103 to go in the first quarter at the St. Paul Civic Center and delighted to have you along with us with Ian Carlson. This is Doug McLeod the double A bracket rolling along class A quarters continue here in a few minutes. This is Mark Randall for the Owatonna Indians trailing now by six the three pointers dropping regularly now. Here's a shot by Bangs but no. Armista Kelly on the rebound and Rosegut comes down. Neither of these teams waste any time getting back to the other end of the court. Three-pointer launched by Tower. He just made the last one. Mark Randall brings the Indians back down. All the way home. Almost rejected and then tied up. Alternate possession goes to... Where's the arrow? It goes to Olatana. There it is on the replay, and they got there at the same time and came down with a one-handed tie. That was Arvesta Kelly, number 54, in there. Now driving and shoveling it up, Mark Randall for Olatana, and Kelly brings off the rebound again for the Raiders. They're really getting this to become a fast-paced game. I think that uh, both teams are able to run, and they're going to use that. Here's Kelly wheeling, dealing, and got it, Arvesta Kelly, Jr. Well, uh, Creighton Durham Hall has had a pretty good size run now. The last seven points, and that's the end of the first quarter. It was tight. It's been Creighton Durham here in the last couple of minutes of the first quarter. That is the end of the first quarter of play, and on our TCF Bank scoreboard, it is the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders 18 and the Owatonna Indians 10. The 1991 Boys State High School basketball tournament continues in a moment. Don't want you to miss anything while we're away paying the bills. That's not the dance line now, mind you. Those are the regular Owatonna cheerleaders. Hard working bunch of young ladies. 18 to 10. The Creighton Durham Hall Raiders leading second quarter underway. In and out from the corner for Roscoe. Well, they obviously you see they come out doing that fast paced game again. I think that is going to be their game plan now for the rest of the game to go on unless they run out of gas and have to start slowing the pace down. Here through the middle comes Joy All for Oatana. Again to the baseline, and again he pops one in. Mark Randall, grizzled old senior veteran of the Oatana Indians. 7.26 to go in the first quarter. Our best of Kelly draws a crowd from the post. Got it. Our best of Kelly now has six. And it is 20 to 12. Creighton Durham Hall by eight. Bangs. Off the rim. Dragged down by Rosgo. Creighton Durham Hall's have an excellent rebounding tonight. I think they're, they've gone on and taken most almost every defensive rebound and they're getting a lot of offense too. It'll be interesting at halftime to have a look at some of the numbers. Slithering in Israel Moses. Wow. Right through the trees, Israel Moses, the senior forward at 6-2. Very deceptive moves. He's even got those Cretan purple sneakers on. And there'll be a foul here. The shot did not go, but I think Steve Rosga is going to get the foul, and he will for Cretan Durham Hall. Now watch Israel Moses Hit inside here. Yeah, this is a great move by Israel. He goes up, gets an eye on the basket. I thought I saw a foul, but maybe not. He thought so, too. <laughs> the look on his face. Yeah, I think so. At the line to shoot, too. Mark Randall for Owatonna. Six minutes, 41 seconds to go in the first half. 22 to 13, Creighton Durham Hall leading by nine. And a chance to trim that margin to eight now for senior guard Mark Randall of Owatonna. Nine points for Randall. Matt McDonough for Creighton Durham Hall. Mostly guarded by Bangs. Roska from the post. Well, they've been posting up here with some efficiency in the last minute or so. In the first minute, actually, of the second quarter. 6.17 to go in the half. In and out for Scott Bangs. Follow through underneath was good by Tom Wenzel, the senior forward. 24-15, Creighton Durham Hall. Here's Matt McDonough. Our Vesta Kelly Jr. with McDonough. 
Does go inside for Moses. Donna. Held on to by Mark Randall, but tied up by Arvesta Kelly Jr. Oh, that was a nice play by Arvesta. He went in there and. There's a break in the action. It's Creighton Durham Hall 24, Owatonna 15, with 5.42 to go in the first half. Creighton Durham Hall cheerleaders are smiling. Their club is leading by nine at the moment, 24 to 15, with 5.42 to go in the first half. And the Creighton, the Owatonna Indians now will bring it back down. Bangs and that floating bounce pass nearly broken up. And we're going to have a foul as Mark Randall tried to turn, really being pestered by Israel Moses. And the foul is going to go on Moses. All right, well, he comes around here on the turn. I think he knew that Moses was out of position and he was going to get the foul. That's why I think he cut in towards the lane so fast. Ben Ariza, the great Durham coach, was on his feet at the time. For the most part, I think it was a real smart play by Mark Randall. He he knew what he was doing, and Israel's a key player, and if you can get him into foul trouble, I think that Oton will be looking pretty good. Moses has two fouls, as does Steve Rosga for Creighton Durham Hall. Tower has one. Wetzel and Stransky, Stransky rather, each have one. Now with five and a half to go in the half, 24-17. Oton closes the margin to seven. Creighton Durham goes inside, and Trigger! The foul's going to go on Strutsky. That is Josh Krieger, number 53, in the lineup for Creighton. Number 53, Josh All right, well, he turns around, gets himself squared up, and gets a shot, and also gets the foul, gets the ball to lie. And uh, now he's going for a three point conversion. I think that was a great play by oh, uh, Creighton Darren Hall. Mark Randall, a little creative salesmanship unsuccessful. Krieger to shoot one. That'll be a three pointer. Rebound comes off to reach Strutsky. 6'5", senior centered, averaging almost nine points a game. Has lost his balance and did Randall. Moses all over him, now bangs. And out of the lane against Matt McDonough. Here's Joey All. Oh, and he made a bad decision there. Here comes Matt McDonough. Leaves it up and in. Oh, that was a great steal. Took off and got himself a two points. Easy two points at that. It's a pass they'd like to have back again. 4.41 to go in the halves. 28-17, Creighton Durham Hall. That's a two-pointer for Mark Randall. That's a Mark Randall. 28-19. Nine-point lead for the Raiders of Creighton Durham. Israel Moses in and out to the left side. Arvesta Kelly Moses pops off the iron and the rebound goes to Stronsky. 4-13 to go in the half. Bolotano wants to slow things down a little now. Randall inside the line and was fouled. Did a little shuffle there it looked like and drew some contact. And there will be a foul. Let's take a look and see the foul here. Well, he got, a, he got the uh, from to leave his feet there, and then so from there on, it was all just easy play. Just let him fall into him. Johnny Tower drawing his second personal. A one and one opportunity now for Mark Randall. 15 foul for Creighton Jarrell Hall. Oatana, incidentally, has three. Mark Randall will get another one. 15 points for Mark Randall with four minutes to go in the first half. It's Creighton Durham Hall 28, Poetana 21. In just a minute, Jim Gilliland will be along with a Class A quarterfinal night session from Williams Arena as State Tournament 91 continues. Stay with us. It is Creighton Durham Hall 30 and Owatonna 23. Now a seven point margin. That's the time left in the first half here in the class double A's at the St. Paul Civic Center. Meanwhile, over at Williams Arena on the campus of the University of Minnesota, the class A night session getting set to go. The Becker Bulldogs, the Long Prairie Indians. Let's swing over there now to Jim Gilliland and check in with the class A tournament. Thanks, Doug. Janet Carvin and Chris Rupp with me. We'll be getting underway shortly. Becker and Long Prairie. Now for the introduction of the lineups. Let's go to public address announcer Bob Reed. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet first the cheerleaders and mascots for these two fine teams. Starting first with the group from the visiting team, Becker. Introducing the cheerleaders, starting with Sandy Weinkoop, Becky Priggy, Stacy Tice, Stephanie Johnson, Jill Jansky, Jenny Marshall, and the mascot is Missy May. The Becker High School cheerleaders and mascot. Now let's meet the home team cheerleaders from Long Prairie. Starting with Ellie Merritt. Stephanie Noble. Don Leesman. Jenny Dahl. Now it's time to meet first the reserves for both teams, starting with the visiting team, the light colored jerseys, the Region 5A champions, a record of 22 and 5, the Becker Bulldogs. Number four, a 5'10 junior, guard Dan Klein. Number 20, a 6'1 junior forward, Brett Gowdy. Number 24, a 6'2 senior forward, Eric Kolbinger. Number 34, a 6'2 senior forward, Jamie Burt. Number 44, 6'4", junior forward, Paul Nelson. Number 50, a 5'10", senior guard, Ed Piccolo. Number 52, a 6'2", senior forward, Chuck Olson. And number 54, a 6'3", senior center, Martin Christies. Now let's meet the home team reserves wearing the dark colored jerseys. The region 6A champions, a record of 25 and 2, the Long Prairie Indians. Number 11, a 5'8 junior guard, Dan Fida. Number 13, a 5'11 senior guard, Jason Kirchner. A 5'8 junior guard, John Tomford. Number 25, 5'11 junior guard, Chris Watska. Number 31, a 6 foot junior forward, Aaron Stefanich. Number 35, a 5'10 junior forward, David Rolke. Number 41, 5'11", senior forward, Rich Decker. Number 43, a 6'3", senior forward, Roger Lau. And number 53, a 6'4", sophomore, Darren Brown. Now it's time to meet the starting lineups. Starting with the guards, alternating by team. Starting for Becker at the first guard position. Number 22, a six foot senior, Jamie Hoosman. For Long Prairie, number 21, a 5'11 senior, Dave Whirlinger. Becker at the other guard, number 30, a six foot senior, Justin Hickna. And for 
Long Prairie, number 33, a 6'2 senior, Brian Krause. At center for Becker, number 40, a 6'4 senior, Jeremy Karpinski. For Long Prairie. Number 55, a 6'8 senior, Dave Ruda. At forward for Becker, number 10, a 6' foot senior, Jason Finkston. And for Long Prairie, number 45, a 6'1 junior, Brian Young. The other forward for Becker, number 32, a six-foot junior, Mike Lundin. And for Long Prairie, number 51, a six-eight senior, Wayne Coppin. The Becker head coach is Tom Shearhart, assistant coach Dwight Lundin, and the balance of the Bulldogs' official party the Long Prairie head coach, Bruce Young, assistant coach, Randy Swanson, the balance of the Indians' official party. The officials for this game are Greg Rathbun and Bob Nick. All right, as you look at the screen, Greg Rathbun there hails from Byron with the longish mustache, and Bob Nick is from the Moorhead area. Welcome back to the St. Paul Civic Center where the Class AA quarterfinals are rolling through the third quarter. Early on in it, it is Creighton Durham Hall 46, Owatonna 33. The Owatonna Indians bringing the ball back down and Joey Hall pops for a pair and it is now 46 to 35. This is Doug McLeod back with you along with Ian Carlson from Livington Jefferson and Billy McKinney joins us now. Billy will be back with us, of course, later on in the tournament as well, but we can't keep him off one of our telecasts. We want to talk about basketball. We've got to have this guy on. The uh, game so far, and uh, we were looking at halftime statistics, Billy, as, as you got in, telling statistic in assists for the first half. Exactly. In the first half, Oratana didn't have any assists, and Creighton Durham had eight assists. And this segment here in the third quarter, Oratana came down in the first half, and they took shots uh, right away without moving the basketball around. Therefore, they were down uh, by 16 points at halftime. I had a tough road to hoe you go at halftime with a team that is clearly dominating the boards. They play outside. They can go inside, apparently, as we've seen them on several times in Creighton Durham Hall. It's tough to come back for Owatonna. Oh, yeah, but uh, Owatonna is showing right now that they, they want to win this game. They're going to come back, and they're going to put all, all out, you know, and try to move the ball and get a few more passes off and get the shots that they want. Veteran tournament team now trailing 46-37. Look at Hart Randall driving to the basket there and getting fouled by Augusta Kelly Jr. there. He started to catch fire here this third quarter. Uh, he had a poor shooting percentage that first uh, half. He was 4 for 11. Now he's come out. He's made his first three shots, including a three-pointer, and he's going to the foul line. And the, another telling statistic during that first half is Owatonna was 7 for 21 from the field as opposed to 19 for 32 for the Cretan team. So they're starting to improve their shooting percentage, which they're making a run here in this third quarter. Oh yeah, for sure. They're making their free throws too, and that's so that's so necessary in these games. Kelly has two personals now. 5.15 to go in the third. Our best of Kelly. And got by Mark Randall. Oatana also is coming back with rebounding. First, first half, they were not rebounding well, but they're coming back and showing that they can rebound, and they're going to get the second shot. Dang, good go. Back comes Johnny Tower, number 45, and in she goes. A great move by Johnny Tower that time on a two-on-one fast break. He comes down under perfect control to avoid getting the offensive charge. 48-38, Creighton Durham Hall, 4.45 to go in the third quarter. Oatana Indians with the ball. Turned back by Creighton Durham. Great steal. Matt McDonough will bring it back for the Raiders. Rosga inside, Dunham. McDonough rather to the baseline on the left side, foul going in. Okay, another 
Take a look at this replay here as Matt McDonough drives to the basket here. Pretty good position there, but he just couldn't get the angle to cut him off to prevent him from penetrating to the basket. Matt McDonough, 6'2", senior guard of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Now they'll float it up for McDonough on the right side. Tower off the iron, but it goes right to Steve Rose. Got a little pump and off the rim. Scott Bangs, number 30, will bring the Oatana Indians back down. Off balance, travel. Randall just got a bit of bad luck. Yeah, the Raiders, are, both teams right now are getting very good shots. Uh, right now, Oatana's, their shots are starting to fall. They had trouble that first half. And Creighton, on the other hand, the Raiders are, are getting great shots, uh, but unable to capitalize right now. Ten-point game, and there's contact in there somewhere. As we got down, and the foul is going to be on... Apparently, Tom Wenzel of Oatana. There's a break in the action. It's 48-38, Creighton Durham Hall with 4.04 to go in the third quarter. Halfway through the third quarter, the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders leading Owatonna 48 to 38. The out of bounds ball will go to the Region 1 AA champion Owatonna Indians. Here is Scott Bangs, the senior guard, to bring the two time defending state champions back down. Randall. Bangs moving in and caught on the wrist was uh, Matt McDonough. Number 31 of the Creighton Durham Raiders. McDonough drawing his first personal. 13 fouls now on Creighton Durham Hall and two so far on Owatonna. 3.45 to go third quarter. Owatonna with the ball trailing by 10. That is off. And a foul call to Stotsky. Went underneath for the shot, or for the ball rather. Now the foul is going to go on Josh Krieger of Creighton Durham. Take a look at Arvesta Kelly there showing some good leadership. Uh, his team is kind of faltering a little bit, trying to pull them together during this dead ball situation to say, hey, let's not lose this lead. Let's maintain our dominance. And now a foul is going to go on Owatonna's Reed Stronsky. And Stronsky will draw his third personal. 3.37 to go in the third quarter of our double-A quarter. It's Creighton Durham Hall 48, Owatonna 38. Class double-A quarterfinal action continues. The two Lens coaching in this one, two veterans. That is Len Horiza, the veteran boss of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. I don't know how long, 30-some years. Been in there, of course, Lynn Olson, the Owatonna Indians coach, two very solid veteran coaches, big on the fundamentals. Build their feeder programs. 50 to 38, Creighton Durham Hall is climbed up by 12 with 3.15 to go in the third quarter. With Billy McKinney and Ian Carlson, this is Doug McLeod at the St. Paul Civic Center. We'll get you back to Class A. Quarterfinal action at Williams Arena in a little bit. Inside, the Oatana bench is howling for goaltending, but nothing happened. It's simply a missed field goal. Now, here is... Arvesta Kelly. Rosga with a baseline left. Tump, the pump, and it didn't go. And we'll have a foul on the contact coming down. It's going to be on Kelly. 2.45 to go, third quarter of our double-A game. Creighton Durham Hall 50, Owatonna 38. Coming up, we'll get you back to Class A quarterfinal action at Williams Arena. Well, Long Prairie's been a little bit off their game. Their twin towers, if you will, 6'8", Wayne Poppin and Dave Ruda. They trail it by nine, but you don't get to the state tournament without some kind of zip, and they've only lost two all season long. Becker has it by nine. Let's go back now and check on what's happening at the Civic Center in class double A quarterfinal. It's the time for the end of the third quarter, 22.3 seconds to go in it. It is Creighton Durham Hall 54, Owatonna 46. With Ian Carlson and Billy McKinney, this is Doug McLeod, and gentlemen, the Owatonna Indians came out of halftime by no means ready to go home. Well, no, that's for sure. Uh, they came out 
limiting Creighton Darren Hall to only one shot, and that's what they needed, you know? The first half, they were giving them money more than one shot, sometimes two and three shots at a time. I think now that they've limited them down to one shot, this is gonna be a much closer ball game. Exactly, and the other thing is the shots that they were making in the first half, now they're going in and out of the basket, and Bangs and Randall have come alive in this third quarter. They have dominated the scoring, and they've cut that 16-point lead down to seven points now. Yeah, they've done a great job. Josh Krieger has left the game now with four personal fouls for Creighton Darren Hall. They've got to sit him. Mark Randall with two key free throws at the line as the seconds tick away. It's a six-point game with the third quarter winding down. So Owatonna, which was down by as much as 12 points, has come back and made it a game. Roska now on the right side for Creighton Darren Hall. There's no bucket, but there will be a foul on Owatonna's Joey All, number 24. And that was nice offensive execution that time by the Raiders, uh, moving the ball around the perimeter two or three times before uh, they attempted a shot, and it was a really high percentage shot. Yeah, I think so. They looked for the open man, and they found him, and he got a good shot. Missed it, but he's on the line, looking for two. Exactly. If they can continue that kind of patience and uh, withstand this Owatonna run, they can still uh, take control of this game and, and, and maintain the lead that they ha they've had the entire game. Johnny Towers first trips to the free throw line tonight. Ten points for him anyway. Our best of Kelly Jr. No. And as the rebound comes down to Owatonna's Reed Strasky, now this is close to a seven-point game. Our TCF Bank scoreboard at the end of the third quarter. It's Reed Darum Hall 55. Owatonna 48. There is Len Olson, veteran coach of the Oatana Indians. 80 wins and 15 losses in the last four seasons. And has to feel good about how his team is playing going into this fourth quarter. Uh, they've cut a 16-point deficit uh, in half, and they have really played well throughout the entire third quarter, and hopefully that flow will continue as they start the fourth quarter here. Here's a popper for Scott Bangs and a three-pointer at a four-point game, 51 for a fifth. All right, say it again, 55-51. Now Oatana pulls to four. Arvesta Kelly got it. 57-51, Creighton Darrell all by six over the two-time defending champion, Oatana Indians. The baseline, a bump for Strutsky. Offensive foul as he went inside. That is Stronsky's fourth foul. Take a look as they went underneath. Now that's really good defense there. One of the mistakes players tend to make when they get into a situation like that, they try to block a shot. In that particular instance, Nick Tampo established good defensive position, didn't let the player beat him along the baseline, stayed high, and drew the offensive foul. And that is a great play. Uh, Owatonna goes, um, excuse me, Creighton goes down and gets a basket and now gets the ball back on a turnover. Four-point swing, possibly. Nate Shore is number 34 in the lineup now for Owatonna. As Stronsky with four personals will have to sit. Arvesta Kelly wheels and deals. Nothing there. Underneath for Israel. Moses on it drops. You know what's great about looking at this Creighton team? Owatonna's made this run, and their expressions on the Creighton players' faces have not changed. They've been so poised throughout this entire run. That's the sign of a very confident basketball team and confident players. Mark Randall got a big one there. He has 28 points now on the game. Israel Moses. Right side tower. Didn't go. And the rebound comes to Nate Shores. His attention is just in the game. Creighton's doing an, I mean, uh, Oatana's doing an excellent job this half on their rebounding again now. Getting the shots that they want and getting the bounds that they want, I think. Randall's shot didn't go, and it comes to Johnny Tower. Pass down under Besta Kelly. 61-53, an eight-point lead now for the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. And now there's a timeout on the floor with 6.01 to go. 61-53, Creighton Durham Hall, and we'll be back in a moment.
Take a look at this last Cretan bucket, an easy bucket by Avesta Kelly here on a fast break. Now, that happened as a result of the Owatonna team crashing the boards. And when you have, send all five men to the board, sometimes you don't have a man back for defensive balance. Uh, Cretan picked that up in an easy basket as a result. Mark Randall now has 30 points. His game average is just under 21. He has 40 as a high game. There's a long two-pointer for Creighton Durham's Matt McDonough. The Raiders come back and pot one every time Owatonna tries to chip away. It's 63-55, Creighton Durham Hall. And the amazing thing about this ball club is their balance. Uh, every player has the potential to score and hurt you. And as we looked at, they fought off this run. All of the players have been, uh, have been involved as we looked at Mark Randall uh, making another sensational move to the basket. 32 points now, and he'll have a chance to make it 33. He showed great concentration in that shot there. I think uh, kept his eye on the basket and just followed through on a shot, and now he has a chance to make it a three-point play. Len Olson relying on his feeder system, relying on getting younger players game experience early. Nobody named Brake in the lineup. Nobody named Chad Colander in the lineup this year for those last two state champion teams. And three-point play goes in for Randall. 33 points. Kelly will get the bucket and the foul is going to go on Oatana's Nate Shores. Kelly was showing great concentration there as he kept his eye on the bucket. Take a look at this replay. The ball goes inside. Mark Randall came over to double team. Kelly saw him coming and turned the other way against the pressure of the defense to make that move. That was great. Sensational quarter awareness by Arvesta Kelly. Arvesta Kelly. 15 points so far at no points in the third quarter. This is his first trip to the free throw line tonight. His chance for a three-point play. And with 5.08 to go in the game, it is now 66-58. Reed Durham Hall by eight points. Randall. Three-pointer. 36 points now for Mark Randall. Only four shy of his season-high game of 40. 66-61. Creighton Durham Hall with the ball and a five-point lead. Tower wouldn't go. And the rebound to Bangs. Scott Bangs for the Owatonna Indians. Fast down they go. Joey All baseline left in traffic. Out of bounds. Goes to Owatonna. There's a break in the action with 4.29 to go. It's Creighton Durham Hall 66. Owatonna 61. We'll be right back. Take a look at this last bucket here. Coming from the NBA three-point area for Scott Bangs. Nice shooter's touch, nice soft touch. Kept it up there around the rim and it dropped in for three. Now, inside of the deep left baseline. Oh, and a slam into Mark Randall. Oh, they're gonna call the foul on Moses and I think that's it. Israel Moses is gone. Moses fouls out with four minutes, 22 seconds to go in the game. And Creighton Durham Hall leading 66-61. Take a look at the contact with Randall. Okay, now you take it, uh, Mark Rand take a look at Mark Randall too. As he completed the shot, realized it was gonna get blocked. He threw his right leg out there to initiate contact. And that was a smart play. Draw the foul, he didn't get the basket, uh, but he's going to the line for two, and he can cut this lead down to three with 422 to play. Israel Moses there. He's a lead player for Creighton Aram Hall. They're really gonna miss him out on the floor, I think, at this point in the game. Well, he had a big bucket there in that third quarter, uh, towards the end of the third quarter, and his defense and rebounding has been key for him, too. Yeah, he's a great player. It's too bad that he had to go out this early. 35 points now for Mark Randall of the Owatonna Indians, who makes it a three-point game now. Creighton Durham Hall has not relinquished the lead, but now leads by three. In traffic, the shot didn't fall. And a foul coming down as Matt McDonough went up to take the shot. It was not a great percentage shot, I mean, from distance-wise, but it was uh, defensive pressure on him. They've got to look to get the ball inside. They've been very effective getting the ball inside to Kelly and allowing him to score. Tom Wenzel with a big interception for Owatonna. Joey All into the post. What's the foot? 
Out and out of bounds. Here's Mark Randall. Goes to the left hand dribble. And it was blocked by Steve Roska as he went up a turn right back again by Wenzel. Here's Bangs. Draw double coverage. Randall weaving. Didn't go. And our Festa Kelly has the rebound. Matt McDonough now for Creighton Durham Hall, leading by three points with three and a half minutes to go. And they need a basket here, and they're going to the man who's been the money man in the fourth quarter, our Festa Kelly. He got a nice shot there, broke it into the key and just took it up and laid it in. He's so smooth uh, when he gets the ball inside. Nice quick move, but not rushed. 18 points for Kelly. Nine of them have come in the fourth quarter. 68-63. Three-pointer will drop for Mark Randall. Oh, man. And here we go again. It's a two-point spread. 38 points for Randall. On the right side, Rosga, three-pointer didn't go. Rebound to Joey All of Oatana. The question is, who will blink first? Man, oh man, three-pointer. Yes, for Mark Randall, who now has 41 points in the game. That is a season high for Mark Randall. We'll take a break with 2.33 to go. 68-68 Thriller. The score is 70-69. to Creighton Darrell Hall leads Owatonna. Now underneath, Owatonna with the ball. Wenzel blocked as Stratsky went up. And a foul on Creighton Darren Hall's Josh Krieger. And that is four on Krieger. That is five on Krieger. And Josh Krieger will foul out with 2.06 to go for Creighton Darren Hall. They've lost two starters now. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. The thing that's gotten over trying to back into this game, number one, they're outside shooting. Their guard play has been outstanding. The other thing uh, thing that's happened is their rebounding has been absolutely outstanding in the second half. They've gotten a lot of second and third shots. Mark Randall's penetration that time caused the defense to collapse and uh, allowed them to get a, a couple extra shots at the basket. Well, you got to give Oatana a lot of credit. They've, I mean, coming down so far at halftime, and then coming back to bring the score and tie it up and need it now, or tie it up now, I guess that is. Uh, Oatan has done a great job the second half. I'll give him all the credit in the world. Reed Stronsky can put the Indians ahead by one with 2.06 to go. Didn't go. McDonough the rebound for Creighton Durham Hall. 70 to 70. 140 points in a high school championship game. And they're equally spread. Harvester Kelly Jr. Let's it go from there. Got it. 72 to 70. Now Creighton Durham Hall leads by two. He has a lot of savvy and a lot of calm, and he's only a sophomore. I'd hate to have to look at him for two more years. Yeah, I think we'll be hearing more about him in years to come. Randall fouled by Steve Rosga. That's Rosga's third. Take a look at Kelly here being pushed away from the post. He says, that's okay. I can turn around and hit the 12-foot face-up jump shot as well as post up inside. What a versatile player he is. He's got a nice shot at that. I mean, all his shots are nice squared up, and he's looking good right at the hoop. Stronsky, one for one, has eight points tonight. One point game, 72 71. Creighton Darren Hall's lead is again shaved to one. Reed Stronsky, the senior center. Ties it up with a minute 42 to go in the ball game. 72 to 72. Becker leading Long Prairie 27 18 at the half over in the Class A game. We'll get back there in a while, but not till we finish with this, baby. Here's McDonough now on the right side, Steve Roska, our best of Kelly Jr. The miscue there, and now it goes to Matt McDonough. 118 to go. Power on the right side, contact in the lane. Foul on Tom Wetzel of Oatana. 
on what he was trying to do that time, Doug, is he was trying to push Kelly off of the post again. Uh, once Kelly gets the ball down in that low post area, he's virtually impossible to stop. So the thing you try to do as a defensive player is try to push a guy a little bit out of his shooting range, but that time he got caught for a little bit too much contact down low. Our best to Kelly to shoot one and one. He has 21 points now with a minute 15 to go in the game. Creighton Durham Hall leads by one, 73 to 72. And the bonus shot for the Raiders, Arvesta Kelly Jr. Creighton got the rebound, and again, popped off by Nick Tamble, number 41. And that didn't go, and here comes Oatana now. 73-72, Oatana with the ball, trailing by one. And Len Olsen, the boss of the Indians, wants timeout with 1.02 to go and a good old double-A tournament sizzler right toward a finish at the Civic Center. 73-72, Creighton Durham Hall leading Oatana by 1.54 seconds to go in the game. And the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders have the basketball. This is Matt McDonough, number 31. Our Vesta Kelly is on the right side. Here is Rosga. Working for the final shot of the game. And obviously, Randall's going to try to come out. There was no foul. Rosga. Here is Tower. 30 seconds to go. Creighton with the ball and a one point lead. Our Vesta Kelly Jr., 25 seconds to go in the game. Rockets it out for Rosga. 20 seconds to go, has to be a foul, and there will be now on Mark Randall. Okay, that's the worst feeling in the world when you're a team and you're down one point, you need the basketball, and that other team is moving that ball around so well like a hot potato, just can't catch up with them. You're running around like a chicken with his head <laughs> cut off almost. <laughs> yeah. At the free throw line to shoot one and one, Steve Rosga, 6'2", junior guard, of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Pressure free throws, he's got to make both of them. Has not been at the line tonight. This makes it 74 72. Creighton Durham Hall leads by two. Len Horizon, the boss of the Raiders, with a long look at the clock. 19.5 seconds to go. Didn't fall. Now Oatana still with a chance, and immediately a timeout. There's timeout with 17.3 seconds to go. The defending state champion, Oatana Indians, trailing Creighton Durham Hall by two. And a finale coming up. 11 seconds to go. It is 74-72, Creighton Durham Hall. Almost turned over. Bangs keeps it for Oatana. They need one to tie it. Inside Owenso. Oh, and it's going to go to Creighton. Great defense by Creighton that time. Forcing Mark Randall to give the ball up. But they've got to get the ball inbound. It's not over yet. I like that timeout. I like that timeout right now because Creighton looked a little disorganized there as they took the ball out of bounds. They've got 2.9 seconds left on the clock. They must get that ball inbound put the ball in the hands of one of their better free throw shooters and get fouled and put this game out of reach. Yeah, well, there's still, I mean, 2.9 seconds. There's still time to get a good shot off, you know, so. Here's Len Olsen. Now, this is Len Horizon right here. Well, couldn't really hear anything there in the Creighton Durham Hall huddle. Len Horizon's walking right out on the court after him to make sure <laughs> No last-minute misunderstandings here. Well, and Len Olsen of Oatana the same. One of the things that he's got to be saying with right now is do not make a bad pass. If you're going to throw that ball away, throw it down to the other end of the court. And don't throw it in a position where Oatana can get it back and score an easy basket. Two seconds, an immediate foul on Tom Wenzel. 2.5 seconds. That's uh, around four-tenths of a second off the clock and how many those look like at this point in the game sometime too. Exactly, you know what they've done uh, over in Europe, they've had this sort of clock for a long time and they did a study with the NBA clock to see how many ticks of a second could go off in a possession if a ball was batted away and it was three tenths of a second. Actually, that can, that can go off, but My uh, gosh. that's pretty quick. One and one for our Vesta Kelly Jr. 
Now it's a three-point margin with 2.5 seconds to go. 75-72, Creighton Durham Hall. And he needs this free throw because anything can happen two and a half seconds, a Hail right. Mary shot, three-pointer could tie it up. This could ice it with 2.5 to go. Got it. 23 points for Vesta Kelly. This one's in the bag. Four-point game. Randall. Three-pointer off the iron, and the game is over. There will be a new double-A boys basketball champion in Minnesota after two years in the possession of the Owatonna Indians and as thrilling a finish as you could want to have in a high school tournament basketball game. This quarterfinal game is history. The final, the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders, 76. And the defending state champion, Owatonna Indians, 72. There's the story on our TCF Bank scoreboard. The 1991 Boys State High School basketball tournament will continue in a moment. It is over, and a sizzling finish this one was. But the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders have ousted the defending champion, Owatonna Indians, from the championship round, 76 to 72. This was a game that at one point was an 11 or 12 margin victory, or at least lead, for uh, Creighton Durham Hall. Yet back came Owatonna, and I think the key moments in this game up to the end might have been when Owatonna came out of the dressing room at halftime determined to make this a ball game, and they did. Exactly. The thing that they did to get back into the game is they uh, improved their outside shooting and they improved their board work, and they hustled all along during that first half, but they just couldn't get the shots down. And, you know, you hate to see a game, uh, any team le lose a game like this, but uh, it's a great way Mark Randall went out. I mean, what an incredible game he had, and now you understand why he's had the accolades as a player that he's had over the last three years. I had any surprises you played the Creighton Raiders. Well, I'll have to give the Creighton guys a lot of credit. I mean, Oatana came out strong in the second half, but Creighton kept going and came out ahead in the end. Boy, and it was a sizzler. All credit to the Oatana Indians rebuilding this year, but oh, those Creighton Durham Hall Raiders did the job. It's a 76-72 victory for the Raiders. And Creighton Durham Hall is on to the semifinals tomorrow night. We'll be back in a moment as the 1991 Boy State High School Basketball Tournament continues. <laughs>